Hello to D. We're going to go over parabolas of best fit right now. Our goal, I can find the equation of a parabola if given a set of points, or I can find the best fit parabola by hand or with a graphing calculator. Uh, parabola is a best, best fit if you've been given a set of points, um, like I have here. We don't know what the equation is. Can we figure out this equation? Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of steps for doing that. The first thing I'm going to say is that this is actually a perfect parabola. Um, this is a mathematic equation. Um, I got this parabola from a mathematic equation. So we're going to find a perfect parabola. I'm just going to show you how to find the equation. Um, the first thing we're going to do for step one is we're going to fill in the vertex for h and k in y equals x minus h squared plus k. So in this case, here's our vertex and that is the point 3 and negative 5. So this is my h and this is my k. So I need to fill in y equals a x minus my h in this case was 3 squared and my k is 5 so I need to put minus 5 on the end. Okay, Now that I've filled that in we're going to move on to step 2. Step 2 says all that's left to figure out is an a value. The easiest way to do that is to put one of the other points in for x and y in the equation and solve for a. So I'm going to pick, let's pick this one here. Uh, that point looks like it's 6 and we got 5, 6, 7, 8 and a half. So it looks like 6 and 8.5. So now this is an x value and this is a y value and we're going to stick it in for an x and a y in this equation and then solve for a. So um, here was our equation, y equals a x minus 3 squared minus 5. And I'm going to put 8.5 in for y. So I put an 8.5 there. Equals a, my x is 6 minus 3 squared subtract 5. So now we just have to follow order of operations to do this. Um, 6 minus 3 is 3. Still got a square at minus 5. Uh, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I get 13.5 on this side, and on this side that 3 squared is just 9, so I have a 9a. And now divide both sides by 9, and 13.5 divided by 9 is 1.5, which means my a value is 1.5. So the equation of this parabola is y equals 1.5 x minus 3 squared minus 5. So there we found the equation of that parabola. Uh, but not all quadratic relationships are perfect, especially if we're modeling a real life situation. Take the following statistics on the height of a baseball versus time. So we have the time in seconds and the height in meters, and we need to find an equation that matches these statistics. So um, here's the graph. I've graphed this on Desmos. I'm going to show it to you here. Uh, here's my Desmos. Uh, this, you can just type in desmos.com and then click on the graphing calculator if you want to put this in here. I've put all the points in for my baseball score uh, using the time as my x's and the height as my y's. Now you see I can't see much here so I have to go and adjust the windows. So I'm going to put in a number for x that's just a little bit smaller than my smallest x which in this case is zero. So I'm going to put in uh, say negative three. And I'm going to put a number in for the big X that's just a little bit bigger than my X there. So let's say that that's an 8. And now for my Y, I'll put in, say, negative 3 again, since my Y's are kind of starting at 0. So I'm going to put in negative 3. And my biggest Y value is 48, so I'm going to put in 50 for my biggest Y value. And as you can see, I've got all the points on there now that you could see when I used my, uh, or when I had it in the oops, smart notebook file. Okay, so now this is not a perfect parabola. You can see that it's not perfectly symmetrical. I've got these two things here and they're not um, at the same height but they're the same distance away from that top one. So it's not perfectly symmetrical. Um, but we're going to try and find something that's pretty close. I'm going to assume that this point up here and that point was um, the point 3, 
8, I believe. We're going to assume that's the vertex, and I'm going to say y equals a x minus 3 squared plus 48 is the equation of my parabola. And then I'm going to pick another point. Uh, let's pick this point z 0, uh, 2, I believe it was. Uh, let's go back and have a look. What was that? That was, yes, it was 0, 2. So we're going to put in 0 and 2 for my x and my y. So I'm going to put 2 in for y, and I'm going to put 0 in for x. And now we're going to do the math. i uh, leave this as a 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3 squared is 9, so I get 9a plus 48. I'm going to subtract 48 from both sides, which means I get negative 46 on this side, and 9a. And 46 divided by 9 is about 5.1. So it looks like our equation is y equals 5.1 x minus 3 squared plus 48. Now let's see how that fits our parabola. I'm going to go back into Desmos and I'm going to enter that down in here. That was y equals negative uh, 5.1, x minus uh, 3 squared plus 48. How's that fit our parabola? That actually looks pretty good. Now, if that didn't happen to fit it very well, what I could do is pick a different point on the parabola, like say pick this one down here or this one up here, and try it again, and then just try and kind of take an average of the A values if that didn't work so well. Um, but that actually looks like it, like it worked pretty well. So I'm going to say that this is the best fit parabola um, for that data. Now we can actually use the graphing calculator to find the best fit data and I'm going to do that for you now. Now your calculator, when you pull up the graphing calculator, um, the first thing you should do is clear the RAM. Now this one already says the RAM's cleared but I'll show you again how to clear the RAM. We go second, then press plus, and then do 712. And I have that information for you right here in this slide and you have that in your note that if you printed it off you'd have it. Uh, so I'm, you have all of this information. You don't have to write very much down here, um, but it might be a good idea once you get the graphing calculator in class to try and follow these instructions again. So we're going to press stat and then go into edit to get our list value. And then once we've got our lists, we're going to enter our numbers in list one and list two. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we're going to go over to list 2 and enter 2, 27, 42, 48, 43, 29, and 5. Now I'm just doing that on my keyboard, but of course you can press the buttons on the calculator to do that. Now, to be able to graph this on the screen, we have to turn the plot on. So to turn the plot on, and this just tells the calculator that we want it to actually graph the points we put on there. We press the second and the y equals like I just did, and you'll get this screen here. And then we have to see how it says they're all off. We're going to turn it on by pressing enter, and then enter again will highlight the on right in there. So now if I press graph, You'll notice I get a couple of points, but I don't get enough of them. I've got the same problem here as I had with the Desmos um, calculator. I've got to adjust my window settings. So that's this stuff down here. We're going to have to adjust our window settings. And when we adjust our window settings, we're going to have to go, a, we press window, and we go a little bit lower than our minimum. So I'm going to use negative 3 again and a little bit higher than our maximum, and remember this is what we put in list one, so I'm going to use eight. 
and then I'm going to use negative 3, which is a little bit smaller than 0, and our maximum y value was 48, so I'm going to go to 50. Now when I press graph, I should have all of those points there, and you can see that in the slide that I gave you as well. Now to get it to give us an equation for those points, here's what we're going to do. We're going to press second, or sorry, we're going to press stat, and then we're going to press over to the calc menu. And in the calc menu, we're going to choose number five that says quad reg. So when I choose number five, I get this screen here and I have to press enter in order to give it an equation. Now here's our equation. Okay, now that has given us our equation. Um, if we want it to graph that equation, we have to tell it to do that. And the information for how to get it to do that is over on here. Okay, so we're going to get it, use these uh, commands to get it to put the graph on there. So here we go. <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is press y equals. This is where we put in equations to graph. And then we have to tell it to put the regression equ equation in. And there's quite a few buttons we have to press to do this. The first button we press is this, ver this one down here. This is vars and then we want to press the number 5 to go down to statistics or you can scroll down and press enter but we can just press number 5 then we need to press the over button a couple of times to get to uh, equation and then you'll notice here it says regression equation and that's the one we want so we can press 1 or enter one or the other will get us there and this puts in the whole equation now when we press graph we can see that it goes through the points quite nicely um, and so if we were going to write that down, so here I have the, the whole thing. If we're going to write down this equation, uh, say I asked you what the regression equation was, we wouldn't write down all of those numbers. Here's the x squared right there, and here's the x, and then the last thing is the constant term. So I'd just go to a couple of digits there. So I would say y equals negative 4.90 um, that will be x squared plus 29.93 if I round it x and then down here for this last part plus 1.98 uh, and that's all we really need for that that's the equation. We don't put in all of them. Uh, if you were to write the equation down, you wouldn't include the decimals. Rounding to two places would be fine. To compare the equation the calculator gave you with the one you came up with by hand, you would need to complete the square so that they are both in vertex form. But we can make one little comparison here, and that is this A value out front. The A value in standard form will be the same as the A value in completed square form. So we've got negative 4.9 there. And what did we get for our A value when we did it by hand? We got negative 5.1. Negative 4.9, oh, forgot to put the negative in front there. Negative 4.9 and negative 5.1 are very, very close. Um, so we know our A values are close. And if you completed the square, you would be able to find out what, they, what the graphing calculator thought the vertex was. And it probably isn't exactly on 3 and 48. And so that's how you use the graphing calculator to find the equation of the line of best fit, or in this case, the quadratic um, <clears throat> equation of best fit.